So let's talk about the media tour. This is gonna be a long post. I'm gonna try to break it into sections. Uh, the media tour is an upcoming event. Brian and I at work to game were invited to as well as uh, many other people. This is all information to the best of my knowledge, everything I can share without breaking an NDA. Um, I am aware that there are people who uh, have creators that they support and communities they're a member of who were not invited or have not yet confirmed. And for those people, unlike a past event where maybe it's working with a brand or it's a sponsorship type thing where you just ignore that event if it doesn't cater to a community, the media tour is about the upcoming expansion Endwalker. And as a result, you may still want the information from the media tour. So my goal with this post is to sum up all of the creators that I know are going. Um, the, the list is much longer than I have confirmation of. Um, that way, if there is a particular type of information that you would want from a creator that is not going, you know where you can go or where to expect. Maybe you don't typically consume a lot of content around Final Fantasy and you clicked on this video because you want to know about the media tour. This will tell you who to go follow based on, I tried to include one to two jobs from every creator, um, even though many will probably cover much more than that. I also tried to give a brief summary of who they are if I know who they are. Um, and then I will include links down below to where you can find them. Uh, and so I am going to kind of break this down as quickly as possible. Let's get started. Now, what is a media tour? Uh, each expansion of Final Fantasy XIV is roughly two years long, from A Realm Reborn to Heaven's Word to Stormblood to Shadowbringers going into Endwalker. Uh, those are typically hyped up for the upcoming expansion across three fan fests, in-person events held the, the first one in North America and the second and third one with a rotating between European and the Japanese fan fests. Um, those give us a ton of information from the initial hype around the expansion uh, all the way until everything they can reveal as of the date of the last fan fest but there's still more information they're willing to share as it gets closer roughly a month out from the expansion they have been giving us a media tour historically ish uh, not that many trends to track and so with that there is usually an associated live letter last time the live letter came second this time the associated live letter came first and this is the point where they are far enough into their development they're ready to talk about job action uh, changes and we get the job action trailer uh, at this event this has already been i am basing everything i'm saying here off of a post from the official blog of final fantasy 14. Uh, yoshi p will present alongside access to an early development build of endwalker is exactly what my translated google told me will be happening uh, this is a hype event the goal of this event is to reach a wide base of everything from players who have have currently been playing they've already pre-ordered and they're excited maybe get them more excited maybe they share that we invite a friend over or you know to join us in the game or return to the game or they're just more pumped about the game in general but also to players who've maybe never played or been on the fence or been long time away and are looking to possibly return and so there will be a variety of creators on a variety of platforms uh, so it is not about getting any one type of content out of the event it is about getting a variety. Uh, so far, it has been stated that they are giving more than 70 interviews, was what was stated during the live letter. Uh, last time, if I recall, the content creator interviews were done in pairs, and there was a total of 37 interviews given across all three regions. They break the world into North America, EU, and JP. That's, that's, that's the delineations they you choose to use. I only ever found like 28 of those 37 interviews. This time uh, they said that they had over a hundred and some dozens creators uh, invited with over 70 interviews. So I look forward to seeing kind of how that is formatted um, and what all comes out of it. Not just from what my involvement is, but from all of the people on this list and the ones who are, who are invited that I just don't know that they're invited yet. This will, according to the Final Fantasy XIV official blog, um, be lifted October 13th. Uh, that is all they have stated. That was also stated in a Japanese Final Fantasy XIV official tweet. Uh, and so they say October 13th. I cannot go into anything that has not been officially stated here. So that is where I'm choosing to what to say and what not to say. Previously, this was a in-person event. Um, based on the blog post, it looks like maybe JP still got to have theirs in person, uh, and then they just couldn't travel, so they couldn't host them elsewhere. But for the rest of the world, this was confirmed publicly uh, that this would be a digital event. The timing of the event, how long the event, when it is, um, while I cannot talk about any of that, it honestly doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if all the regions go at the same time, different times, all that matters is when can they tell people about it. And that is the date I stated above based on the Final Fantasy XIV official blog site translated. Um, obviously, if we get a chance to state official date and time that our content will go live, I would love to share that with you. But do note that 
Creators that invited to this event may choose to go dark for a period of time. They may stay live all the way up until the embargo date lifts. Please understand that this will be individual by creator or by outlet as they possibly want to make content about it or want to simply avoid sharing any information that they might accidentally share if they choose to remain live or continue posting to any platform they are on. So now the question is who? This is the big section. Uh, I am going to break this section into a couple of, uh, of groups. Uh, I'm going to refer to them all as outlets because I think that's a nice universal term. I'm not really sure what word to use. And this is all about who can spread the excitement and to who can they spread it. Uh, this will vary in the amount of time they've played the game, the location that they're from or their coverage is targeted towards, the language that it's posted in, even beyond the traditional German, French, English, and Japanese, um, who their audience may be as far as what types of players they are, where they live, uh, the demographics their audience is made of, where they post and was officially stated as one and some dozens. Uh, so I literally don't even know how big the list is. We never found out what the list was last time. Um, I am basing my partial list on who has publicly confirmed that they were invited and that that has been shared with me by multiple sources or I directly saw their tweet myself. So this is to the best of my information. I will list links in the description below uh, and I will put the primary way that I, I interact with their content or I see their content being posted by any, uh, followed by any other. So some people will have multiple links. They will be uh, linked in the easiest place to find them and work their way down. The first of these three sections is traditional press. This section I can assure you is going to grow because traditional press doesn't share every single time they're invited to early access of anything. This is your traditional media outlet such as um, Kotaku, IGN, and all of that. The ones confirmed here, the first one is Gamer Escape. Gamer Escape is the single largest source of Final Fantasy XIV info. If I just need to look something up, they actually run a podcast called Aetherite Radio. I would compare them to the World of Warcraft website Wowhead. Um, they have a lore creator that works with them called Anonymous, uh, who actually is one of the most well-known lore creators uh, for anybody that looks for a lot of deep lore analysis about this game. Uh, and RPG Fan is an extensive RPG coverage site that's self-stated, not one I am familiar with. They have confirmed they're going. And then Gamer Trend, um, a pop culture site that seems to have everything from comics to games, uh, and Vivi or Vivi uh, tweeted out as a writer that they would be covering this event on behalf of them. It is not uncommon for creators to cover on behalf of an outlet. So sometimes people wonder why a certain creator was created and was invited and what one wasn't. And while I'm sure Square Enix has criteria by which they decide who to invite and who, who, who not to, and maybe it's not that they didn't, maybe they just don't know about that person or whatever. I don't know how they come up with their list. Um, I will say sometimes people are assuming that a creator was invited and instead that creator is actually there on behalf of a media outlet, a press outlet that was invited. Um, so it's possible that Square Enix didn't invite them either. I literally don't know. This video is about who was invited and where you can find the information. Reddit does appear to be going. The Final Fantasy XIV official Reddit, uh, not official in that it's from Square Enix, but it is the largest. It is the jumping off point if you're on Reddit looking for Final Fantasy XIV info. They were invited last time and they do appear to be invited this time. Uh, last time they sent a representative. That representative was who I shared my interview time with. It was me and Brian and then her. And I will tell you that she was not just there to play the game as we had access to it the way she wanted to play. She actually had an incredibly organized itinerary of all the things that her community wanted her to get to. And she was working down that list. In the interview, she literally had a list of typed up interviews on behalf of that community. Um, so if you are part of that Reddit community, I'm sure you know they will be looking for feedback of what to look for um, as they get closer to kind of covering that event. I don't know how they're going to handle that, um, but that was an interesting outlet because Reddit is not a place where there is one kind of editor or things like that. It's a it's a conglomerate. Uh, they actually have a post up as well as a list. Their list of creators varies slightly from mine. Um, the Twitch and YouTube creators, I'm going to break this into three broad categories. The first category is going to be rating and end game content. Uh, and I'm talking about the content they post. So not necessarily what they do, but the places that I believe the rating and end game community, people looking for up to got updates on rotations and things like that. The places I would start first out of this list, but I have no idea who's going to make what. Um, so I will talk about what job they play and where they post. The, the groupings here might be, appear a bit arbitrary. I just grouped these creators into three groups as best I could. I'm only going to list one or two jobs for each creator. So even if they play more than that, um, you know, I assume the first one I'm going to talk about here, I assume he's going to post on literally every job in the game. Uh, but 
just to kind of give a little bit of disclaimer up front. Mr. Happy, one of the longest running and largest creators in Final Fantasy XIV, has of course confirmed that he is invited. Uh, he posts to both YouTube and streams on Twitch. I think of him more as a streamer and then YouTube kind of spins off as a result of that. Uh, he plays more than 14, but it is very much his focus. He runs State of the Realm as a podcast. Uh, and if I had to limit what jobs I would look for Haps to cover, I would pick Monk and Machinist as the two jobs I'd like to see his coverage on. Everyone is going to likely talk about Reaper, Sage, and Summoner, so you'll notice that I leave those off the list uh, in most cases here because I just assume everybody's going to have an opinion on those three. Uh, Ms. Tech is the second one with MTQ Capture. She's a go-to for many people's raid guides. Uh, she has highly edited and easy to understand YouTube content. Uh, and honestly, at the last media tour, she impressed me as far as her work ethic more than really anybody else. It was incredible um, and astounding to be humbled by the way many of these people uh, take what they do very seriously. And she impressed me unbelievably. Um, very inspirational to see work. She streams on Twitch on a variety of games and her YouTube channel is exclusively 14 guides. Uh, and I would look to her for Paladin and White Mage. Uh, Ren... Ren has recently gotten the spotlight for the way he raid leads. People love his voices and all of that. Uh, and he was, of course, the raid lead in the ultimate with Rich Campbell, um, the, the Rich Cobb that was a massively viewed event. Ren is a veteran raider. Uh, he has over 400 UCOB kills. Uh, he was in the group that was the world first eight tank, uh, tank Cobb. Um, and he streams on Twitch, does post to YouTube. He's been working hard on preparing uh, his YouTube editing and stuff building up to this event and he goes well beyond uh, what he's been known for uh, So he shares a lot more than just being that he is you know talked about all sorts of things on his stream uh, But he is a tank mentor in the balance discord the balance discord being one of the community sources of endgame theory crafting I would personally look to him for uh, tank changes before the way he feels about any other roles, but you know, like I said, many of these people have opinions well outside of what I list. Llama Todd teaches people Savage, oftentimes overlaps with Ren. Very fun to see both of them uh, collaborating in content together. Uh, and he possibly has the best Llama emotes on Twitch, but more importantly, uh, he just reaches out and teaches all sorts of people. He has actually been the one teaching Brian and I Savage this tier and is a very welcoming intro to in-game progression. Uh, for the love of God, I wish he posted more to YouTube. He is known for Ninja and Warrior, so that's what I would look to him first. Uh, now we're going to move into the second section. The second section here is variety. This is honestly going to be the biggest section. Just about everybody would fall in this. Uh, and I will start off with Zeppla. Uh, now, of course, she has opinions on things like Ultimate, but Zeppla is known as a cheerful Viera who covers most of the aspects of the game. Uh, this year, she's been one of the go-to intro points for people coming over from WoW and the Bunzer community of all kinds of players. She streams and posts highly edited content to YouTube regularly. She is perhaps the only creator I think of, not as a streamer with a YouTube channel or a YouTuber with a streaming channel, um, but is incredibly talented on both platforms. Uh, she is a dancer main, and I expect a ton of coverage from her. Um, she does such an excellent job. Mioni is perhaps the news source I use most when I am augmenting the official lodestone. I think of him as a news source for 14. Uh, he has a great voice, chill attitude. People know him for things like showing cosmetics, uh, video guides on the fashion report, upcoming changes. As a white mage main, I, I assume he'll have opinions on the healing changes, but I honestly would look to him to see if there's anything outside the battle system that we learned from the media tour, because his things outside of the battle are uh, the content that I most commonly come across his content for. Work to game. That's me and Brian. Uh, I stream five days a week, and we have a number of channels, but work to game was our launching point. Uh, Brian, in addition to being a summoner main in the past, uh, and looking forward to Sage and Reaper, of course, uh, he has been looking forward to, in particular, the Black Mage changes, so that's what I'm going to look to him to see what he thinks. I am a warrior main, and outside of deleting my warrior job stone, wasn't looking to change regardless, um, but I'm sure I will have opinions on warrior changes. Uh, we talk about all things 14 and possibly beyond, rarely less than 22 minutes, and of course, if you found me here, you probably know about me over there. Uh, Spofi. Uh, a cozy Lala that has streamed possibly more days, definitely consecutive, uh, 14 than anybody else I know of. Uh, even with a Fantasia, I will always consider her a Lala in my eyes. She does raid with Nest, but she gets to a very wide variety of the game. Um, I, I think of her as a white mage main, um, but she is a, a very variety creator within the space uh, for the fact that I still think of her as a 14 creator. Rook, 
of Bird of Chess. She's part of the Aetherite Radio podcast. She also um, is an official Guild Wars person and is on a podcast over there as well. Um, she covers those two games as well as a bunch of others, but primarily those two. I adore the Bird Fam. Uh, it's an inclusive space. Her streams are oftentimes right as mine end, so it's somewhere that I get to watch a lot. Uh, she raids uh, off stream with Sharply Dressed Man's raid group, and she's a healer main. Um, and when people accuse White Mage of being the powerhouse, she's often a, a arguer for why Astro is actually incredibly powerful. So I think, you know, with people asking questions about Scholar and all that, I look forward to her healer coverage. Larry Czar is known for uh, comedy antics. Uh, I will link his most obscure video below that is not 14. I've watched this thing way too many times. We watched it again as I wrote this. Uh, and his comedy is rooted in a deep understanding of the game. Uh, and while we have missed him posting regularly as the next chapter in his life is hopefully everything that he wants it to be, uh, I look forward to his his content. He is a summoner main. Uh, I'm sure everybody's going to cover her summoner. But honestly, just anything he can cover, I'm sure it'll be thorough. There's a good chance it makes me laugh. No pressure, Larry. Good to see you anytime you post. Um, maybe you can cover samurai. Don't have too many samurai mains uh, looking to be included in this list. So, you know, maybe. Uh, Drac... Uh, is the raid lead of the Nest group. They are not known for kind of world first, even though there's many talented players in that group, like uh, like more like a TPS is, uh, but they are a wildly entertaining raid group. Uh, as a monk main and as a raid lead, I expect him to have coverage that will likely extend beyond uh, just monk, but monk was one that we got partial changes to during Shadowbringers that we knew was likely not done. Uh, and it, I would like, I look forward to seeing Kind of how he responds to that. Sly co-lead, co uh, blah, 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 co-leads the State of the Realm with Mr. Happy. Um, Sly plays a huge variety of games. I think of him as always knowing what's going on uh, in and around gaming in general, where the events are, always uh, kind of having an involvement there. And uh, But when he is in 14, he is a Dragoon main. I do look forward to his thoughts on that, uh, especially with Dragoon's main possibly having some opinions on maybe new trust additions or uh, or being a good source of information on Reaper in particular since they're going to share a gear set. Uh, Chili is a co-host of the Moogle Go Round podcast. Chili has been on more uh, and has hosted a wider, wider variety of guests than any other 14 podcaster I can think of. Uh, if there was ever somebody the great that you thought was tied to the community, such as the talented uh, voice of Susan Calloway, I linked my favorite song of hers down below. Um, he has, of course, already had that opportunity. He's already either been on a podcast with them or has hosted a podcast with them. Uh, and he is, of course, looking forward to White Mage and Monk. But I think of him as somebody who I know for a fact got titles from the Ishgard Restoration. So alongside Mioni, I want to know what he thinks beyond the battle system. Uh, and I would look to Chili in particular. Of course, I'm excited that he gets to cover this event. But I am looking forward to his coverage beyond November 5th with the November 5th live letter going into changes to crafting and gathering. He has an interest in PvP. I want to know what he thinks about crafting and gathering post-November 5th. Next is Frosty. These are in no particular order, by the way. I think they're in the order that I saw their tweets go out. Uh, Frosty is the host of Mog Talk, and people, many people know him as the World First coverage guy. Uh, I look forward to seeing what they, you know, what he can do as far as the next World First coverage. Their last coverage was the most impressive so far. Uh, I believe he is a Maladin, Paladin main, and uh, alongside Mr. Happy is actually included in, as of this filming, an upcoming uh, event from the WoW Guild Echo uh, as a Final Fantasy XIV event. I've watched him do a ton of Party Finder Savage, uh, which tests his patience. Congrats, of course, to his upcoming baby Mogborn there. And uh, I look forward to his coverage of PvP after the 5th uh, as somebody that I want to see that. His podcast, like Moogle Go Round, also runs the gamut of collab. And there is, I assure you, an episode of Mog Talk for anybody that's interested in a 14 uh, podcast of any kind. He has covered every subject with all sorts of guests. Uh, Stout, involved in the world first phase. I'm not. I'm honestly not as familiar with her content. Um, her streams fall at a time that I can't watch. But I've, I've, you know, seen her as a comfy Lala. And uh, for this list, list is one of the few Bard mains. And uh, Bard is one of the ones that we did not get a lot of information on during the live letter. So it's one that I would look to Bard and Scholar anywhere that anybody's covering healers or Bard. I want to know what they think. Uh, I want to know what the Bard mains think. Shen is another creator that I'm not as familiar with. Covers a variety of games. Founded LunarCon. Um, I understand them to lead Joe Cat, who has some funny videos. I understand them to lead Joe Cat's uh, free company uh, and Mains Warrior. So good choice there. Uh, Whoops. Now Whoops is an incredibly gifted player. I did not put them in the Raider section of above though because I think of it as the content they create. Um, uh, 
I I think that the content they create goes well beyond that. And I think of them as like a goofy member of Nest, um, a variety Final Fantasy XIV content creator, um, somebody that can make me smile like Larry. Uh, and, you know, is, is a Dragoon main there. So I look forward to seeing what Whoops uh, covers. So Jesse Cox. Um, it is hard to sum up Jesse Cox this briefly. I think of him as the OG Twitch creator. Do yourself an, a favor and watch his YouTube content as well. He is very thoughtful, very thorough, and is all around an incredibly talented creator. Uh, well beyond just gaming. To take a brief stab at summing it up, it is literally faster to just go ahead and with his links include a link to his Wikipedia down below. Um, I believe he mains Red Mage, but I will tell you he is somebody who literally leveled Warrior so that he had Warrior for the last hour of content in Shadowbringer story. Um, so, you know, expect his coverage to be whatever he thinks makes the best coverage. Um, this is an incredibly talented and gifted and diverse list, but even among that, um, he's a legend. So, um, it's hard to sum up, Jesse. Uh, it's me, JP. Uh, I believe this was actually, I believe his invite was confirmed by Jesse Cox. I didn't see it in particular. I think of JP as a variety creator. Uh, Red, Mage, Red Mage Ninja Dancer is what chat kind of told me he plays. I personally look to him for discussion style content. Uh, so around the upcoming expansion, maybe there's, there's there are going to be discussions on things. Uh, he's talented as a literal producer of content, so I don't really know what to expect here. Uh, but we'll see. So from the, there, we'll move to this last section. Now, this is going to be what I call new faces. Um, these are people that I think of as less experienced members of the community. There are people up above that could probably be down here. There are people down below this line that I'm drawing arbitrarily in the sand that could absolutely be above. Uh, really what it is is that I'm expecting them to have a particularly fresh take as opposed to above. I um, would not be shocked if they compare their thoughts here to past content or past ways jobs have played. I could be wrong on all that. This is just an interesting way to break up the list in kind of you know, people that you could expect, hey, how's my job changing, as opposed to how exciting are the new jobs. Uh, I'm going to start this section off with Asmongold. It's your boy, Zach, and uh, he has his own space to communicate what's going on in his personal life. Uh, I, I can't make this list without mentioning him, because it does seem that Rich confirmed that he was invited. Uh, and him even making his character and logging to the game is one of the largest events that, Square that this game has ever had without Square Enix involvement. It is so large that it actually resulted in Square Enix direct involvement. Uh, I'm thrilled to see the way he's covered this game so far. Um, best of luck to him either way. I don't know if he will attend. I would love to see his coverage, uh, but I, of course, respect that he needs to do what is best for him and those around him. So I just wanted to address that so that anybody in the comments was not like, well, what about Asmongold? I, I, I don't know. Uh, Rich. The, the Rich Cobb centerfold himself and uh, an ambulance voiceover man. Rich has been um, nothing if not worth talking about. Controversy, trolling tweets, he loves poking the bear, he loves making a small amount of content last an incredibly long amount of time, he adores this game and everything I've seen him find about it. Possibly the only person that will go to this event and ask if he could stall the embargo bait, the date because he wants to scroll Twitter that day. I could not write down a description of this man without poking fun at him. Uh, Brian and I have covered how we actually feel about him being in game almost as many times as he's been accused of uh, playing the game wrong, which of course he then tweets something along the lines of, just clear to woo, this game's easier than wow. Uh, <laughs> so he'll go to this event. He will not be able to be carried at this event. His opinions will be his own. Uh, he grabbed the Uwu Scholar weapon, you know, saying that that would be the best job in Inwalker. Uh, <laughs> he adores Summoner. He cleared Yukov on Machinist. Let's see what he can do. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Rich. Um, <laughs> Annie is a large creator that came over from WoW recently. Um, she has an incredibly large reach. I believe this to be because she's charming, she's well-spoken, she's brand safe, she's consistent, she's hardworking. Um, I, I do not get the chance to consume that much of her content, uh, but these are the things I think of in any time I have uh, seen her covered. Um, she is... She was literally paid to try 14, and now she's switched over to covering it a ton all on her own. Uh, she was included in, she's been included in short lists of companies um, across the board, but of course including Square Enix in the Fat Black Chocobo event. 
She is among the handful of confirmed EU creators. She's not the only one. I've already named many that are from the EU. But this is a big deal because last time the Media Tour was not large enough in the physical EU location to have gotten to include really all the EU content creators that people would have liked to hear from. So it's a big deal uh, just to mention here and all the other EU creators, it's a big deal to see representation more from that region than we have in the past uh, at, at the Shadowbringers Media Tour. Uh, she stated she does not know what to expect. That has not stopped her in the past from making a large impact on not only her community, but growth around 14. And alongside the other WoW creators I just named and many more, um, I welcome their perspective. She is a Summoner vein, main. I'm sure she knows that there's a big deal around Summoner. Um, you know, I, I, I say all this knowing that people are frustrated that people in this section, this fresh creator section, um, sometimes are frustrated uh, it seems because they assume that that person was invited instead of who they wanted to be invited. Like they were like, well, we were going to invite that person, but we'd rather this person who hasn't played that much of the game. I don't think it's that straightforward. Uh, and so I look forward to seeing Annie's excitement around the game. She's done a great job covering it so far. To continue this section to creators, you may know less because they do not have the large initial draw that uh, those first three brought over with them. Zumi. Uh, Zumi's one of my favorite high energy creators. Uh, finding her very early on in her, her Sprout journey, I have enjoyed uh, watching her take on this game. She has fun changes of scene changes and, and things like that, making her very entertaining to, to play. At first, I couldn't remember what job she plays because I just enjoy watching her play. And she takes on every piece of this content that I get a chance to see her cover in basically its most pure form. Um, that is not just like minimum item level raids that we've seen a lot of people doing, but also minimum item level dungeons. I, I don't even know anybody that does minimum item level dungeons, uh, but Zumi does. Uh, so, self-proclaimed inclusive creator. I'm thrilled to see her fresh take on the game. She's a newer face in the community. She is a black mage main. She loves her spell speed. Uh, and black mage is one of those jobs that uh, I think a lot of people do have questions about. Jahara. Now, if the event was mostly focused on cosplay or a cro upcoming crossover with something like Zelda, this is literally who I would look to first. Um, she literally is a Japanese tutor, so it's really interesting to see her um, be able to cross that language barrier. Not that many creators in the 14 community can do it. Uh, and her time as Sprout has been nothing if not engaging. Uh, she brings incredible energy, a fun take. She's a bard main. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad to see newer creators have a perspective in this as well. Uh, Curious Joy. This is a self-proclaimed variety creator I was not familiar with before this. Uh, I had not heard this name until I saw her tweet go out. Uh, that is one of the neat things about events like this is it's a chance to get to know people. I literally met Comic Storian, who is enormous and has been on the platform a long time through the last media tour. Uh, so I look forward to getting to know her and her content in October. When I loop back, I'm going to go back through this whole list. Uh, and uh, at a glance at her stream, she was an E12S 12, 12 prog. She was on a white mage. So I've been told she also plays Gunbreaker. Um, so I'm sure she'll have an opinion on that third cartridge. So I look forward to getting to know more creators. There's going to be ones well beyond this list that I also don't know. Now from here, I do have one final fourth section um, because I didn't know really how to cover them. And these are the couple that I've already found that are in other languages. Um, there are ones above that speak other languages, are from other regions and all that, but these are ones who I see posting primarily in another language other than English, which means I will likely not be able to consume their content personally. But I wanted to note them for a couple of reasons. The first is this reminds us that the community is diverse. Out of this hundred and some dozens, that's worldwide. Uh, so many of those people will not be posting in English. This second of all reminds us that Square Enix is distinctly aware of how diverse and worldwide they are. Uh, and then the third thing here is that I know many of you uh, are bilingual, or, or trilingual or so on. And so maybe some of you speak the languages that other creators posting are, um, are going to post in. So in addition to these two, maybe you can find other ones. And if they get a chance to have a unique take or get a, to get to ask a question or anything like that. Um, last time I didn't get to find all the information that came out of the media tour. And uh, I would love to have it. I'm sure the community would. So hopefully um, people can help kind of get that information to where it can be consumed in more languages. Hopefully all of this is, of course, making it to English, which I appreciate, but hopefully all the English stuff is also going the other way so that everybody worldwide can have as much information as they, they want. This is not only valuable information for the game. If that was the case, we would just play the game on the 19th and it would be no big deal. But a lot of times events like this are where we find out um, how Square Enix feels about upcoming content. Last time we got to ask literal interview questions of Yoshi P that also gave us insight into things that didn't happen during Shadowbringers and just gave us better insight on how the devs think and feel. And uh, that needs to come from multiple perspectives and that includes crossing language barriers. So the first one here is uh, ARC FGO. Uh, everything seems to be in Spanish. And uh, 
So I know Spanish players in general, especially with the Oceanic Data Center coming online, um, they do have general concerns about not being heard. I believe there was a Spanish creator at the last media tour. So good news that there's one here. Uh, I don't know if there's the same creator. Uh, I'm not fluent in Spanish. So um, hopefully that's one of, of many uh, to represent that part of the world because they don't have their own data center. It's not like an officially voice acted language or anything like that. Uh, but they are aware that those players exist. So hopefully this helps kind of show that and help them have anything that that community needs in particular um, kind of communicated back to the devs somehow. Uh, the next one here is Eris Kai. Uh, they're followed by English speaking creators on Twitter. So, and I see that they sometimes tweet in English, but their, their coverage on YouTube and Twitch seems to be mostly in German. Um, she will be attending on behalf of a Swiss gaming magazine as one of their journalists. Uh, and so I don't know if that's going to be posted in German, posted in English. Um, and so that's, that's the other one there. I'm sure there are many other creators. Um, not, it is a limited event. Uh, last time they were incredibly hands-on. There were representatives there to answer any questions I was having, troubleshoot any technical issues I was having. Um, they, they was very hands-on by Square. So it cannot just be open invite to everybody if they want to manage it the way I've seen them manage the media tour in the past. Uh, and that inherently means the list cannot be all inclusive. So hopefully this list helped give you a couple people to kind of take a look at um, different jobs they cover, things like that, so that you can have a feel for where you can go for job coverage, where you can go for certain types of coverage, um, just in case your favorite content creators um, are not going to be at that event either because they're not able to go or because um, they were not invited. Uh, this was just meant to be coverage of everything I do know about what is happening um, because unlike a event that is just about, um, you know, a sponsored event or something like that this event has a lot of valuable information for 14 fans and so it is worth paying attention to even if your favorite creator happens to not be involved so hopefully this helps uh, if you have any questions if you have anybody else that you have confirmation of definitely post it down below i will be uh, as soon as the embargo date lifts i will be doing everything i can to go and consume all of this so anywhere you can tell me as a as a 14 fan and as a viewer as well as a content creator uh, i appreciate it Thank you guys, and uh, I really, really look forward to Endwalker.